discuss about the demo of our project that means what we are going to build in this project and what we are going to achieve in this project so this is the demo of our project monstack crud application as you can see over here at the top we are having the a black color navbar with the white color text as our project title monstack crud application so bottom of that navbar we have the add post which this button is used to change the root of the our project to adding the new post so when you click on this button it will take us to the new root in this root we are going to add the new post to our application so later we will see about this add root root so first we will see the main root that means blocks list or we can call it as post list so you can see here we have the different post so for every post we have the three things post title post image and the description about the post or we can call it as the blog so here you can see the post title is why we choose react so here we are adding all the posts about the technologies only so we are learning about the monstack applications that's the reason i have added the all the posts about the technologies like javascript technologies node js etc so our first post here is why we choose react so this is the image of our post we are going to add this image through the urls so bottom of that image we have the description this is the post description the good thing about the react js it allows to isolate debugging etc so for every post we are having the two actions the first one is edit and the second one is delete so as you can see here for the second post also we are having the same two buttons that means edit option and the delete option so the second post title is node js versus python here also we are having the same image and bottom of that image we are having the description about the post and bottom of the description we are having the same two actions edit and delete for the third post also we are having the same thing post title post image and bottom of that image we are having the post description here also we are having the same actions edit and delete so now let's perform these two actions for any one of the post so i am going to select the first post and i am going to perform the edit action for this post so we have to click on the edit button on this post click on the edit here you can see the root got changed in the url and we got the input field values directly because we are going to edit this information that's the reason we should add these values to the input fields before only so this first input field is post title and the second input field is image url as we saw in that uh, roots page not not roots page post list page the second thing in the post is post image url that's the reason we have to include the url in the input box and the third is description so you can update any one of the value in this post so here our post title is why we choose react now i am going to change this title as why we choose react js framework framework so here i have changed the post title now i am going to click the update post button here you can see we got the our pop up congrats your post edited successfully if you click on the okay you can see over here why we choose react js initially the first post title is why we choose react later we have changed the post title to why we choose react js framework so one action is completed now i am going to perform this edit option to the one more post so here you can see node js versus deno js now i am going to change this post title as some other name click on the edit button here you can see already we got the deno js versus node js so now i am going to change the title as using deno js and node js for backends bsc so now i'm going to click the update post initially the third post title is deno js versus node js now we are going to change the title from deno js to node js to using deno js and node js for backends so after clicking the update post button the third post title should change now i'm going to click the update post button here you can see we got the congrats pop up so if you scroll up you can see the third post title using deno js and node js for backends so we have completed the edit option now i am going to use the add post button so as of now we have 
only three posts in our application the first one is why we choose react js second one is node js versus python and the third one is deno js versus node js for backends now i am going to add the new post that means our fourth post so to add the new post we have the button in our main page only here you can see this is the main page so in this page only we have given one button to add the new post so click on this add post button here you can see the root of our application is changed so for every new post we have the three options or we can call it as three input fields title image and description so now i am going to add the fourth post so you can add anything so here we are dealing about the technologies that's the reason i am going to use the technologies post only so here i am going to search about one of the post so the fourth post is i am going to add is angular js versus node js not node js react js because angular is the front end framework so i will type angular js versus react js so select any one post you can select anything so here you can see we have the i am going to copy this title you can copy anything copy and paste it in our title and select any one image so here we are having the image click on this and copy image address and paste it in the image url input field and select some text from this blog only or you can select anything so i am going to copy this text and paste it as the description control c and paste it in the description input field so now i am going to click the add post button so as we know initially we have only three blocks or three post in our application so this is the fourth post that we are going to add after clicking the add post button these new post will be added to the database and we are going to see that fourth post in our home page so i am going to click the add post button here you can see congrats new post added successfully so if you scroll down you can see the fourth post angular versus react js which one is most demand front end development framework in 2019 you can see we have added these image using the url and bottom of that image we have added the some of the text about the these angular versus react post you can see this is the text that we have copied here also you can see we are having the same text and for this also we got the two actions edit and delete now i am going to perform the edit option for this post so this title looks very lengthy so i am going to make it small and i am going to change the year also because this is 2020 ending but in this post we are having the 2019 so i am going to change the title as 2021 so i am going to click on the update post initially we are having the year as 2019 so we have updated the year using these update route so now i am going to click the update post button here you can see congrats your post edited successfully click on the okay here you can see 2021 so we have changed the new post year successfully so in the crud that means create read update and delete we have completed the first three things we have created the list that means post and we got the list in this page that means we read the list and we have also completed the update now we are left with only one thing that is the last one which is called as the delete so compared to create read and update delete is one of the simplest task in the crud applications now we are going to perform the delete option for any one of the post so now i am going to perform the delete option for our recently added post so we have added our fourth post now only so now i am going to delete this post so this is the fourth post angular versus react js now i am going to click the delete button for this post click on the delete button here you can see we got the alert pop up as well as we got the normal pop up and you can see our fourth post is deleted successfully so we have implemented the four operations in the crud create read update delete successfully so this is the project demo this is very simple because this is the crud application i haven't added any unrelated information and any unrelated resources in this project it's very simple we are going to use the react as our front end mongodb as our database and node js and express js as our back end so from the next video we are going to start the implementation of our project
Thank you. See you in the next class. Welcome back guys. In the previous lecture we have seen the demo of our projects that means what we are going to build in this project. So now in this video we are going to start the implementation of our project. So before getting started we have to create a new project folder for this monster crud application. So open your file manager and select any one of the drive to store our application. So I am going to use my local disk projects f for the application so in this project only i am going to select the personal projects and here i am going to create the new project select new folder so here i am going to write the project title folder as mon crud monster crud application so this is our project folder in this folder only we are going to create our monster crud application project so first we have to open this folder in the vs code so open your any favorite code editor so i will suggest you to use the visual studio code because in that visual studio code we are going to use many snippets including the monster that means react node express and mongodb so we are going to get all the snippets about the monster technologies in the vs code so if you have any another favorite editor you can use it but i'll suggest you to use visual studio code only so open your code editor so here you can see i have opened the visual studio code now click on the file click on the open folder so this is the local disk f that means our projects folder so where is local disk f here you can see this is the local disk f so click on this and select the personal projects so this is the projects folder mon crud so click on this and click on the select folder so this is the full stack applications we have to follow some rules while we are developing the full stack applications that means first we have to develop the front end in some applications first we have to develop the back end so if you there are many ways to create the full stack application but for every application there will be some easiest way to create so in this application also we are going to use the same trick so first we are going to create the required components and we are going to install the required dependencies in the front end application then we are going to move into the back end so before getting started first we have to create the new react application in this moncrud folder so to create the new react application we can use the normal system terminal or we can use the windows terminal so for our convenience i am going to use the integrated terminal in the vs code so click on this terminal select the new terminal here you can see we got the powershell in the vs code so in this first we are going to create the react application because this is the full stack application in every full stack application we are having the front end and back end so although it is full stack we are going to use the monstack technologies that means react as front end and the node as back end so first we are going to create the front end to display some information to our user so first we are going to create the react application using the npx create react app command so i am going to write the npx create react app so initially in normal situations we can write the application name as moncrud but here this is the full stack application that's the reason we are going to use the front end back end or the client server as our front end back end names so for our react application i am going to use the name as client because which the user can see the server side information is kept in the node js side so that's the reason i am going to use the react application name as client c l i e n t so if you press enter it will create the new react application in the moncrud folder and the application name is client so press enter so it will start creating the new react application it may take some time around 1 to 2 minutes depending upon our system as well as net performance 
So before creating the new react application, you must check whether you have installed node.js successfully or not because react is one of the node technology only without node, we cannot install or we cannot create the new react application. So make sure you have installed the node.js in our system successfully. So if you don't know how to check whether you have installed node.js successfully or not, you can open the command prompt cmd and in this you can type node. Here you can see we can able to see the welcome to node.js version 12.19.0. If you are not able to see this text then you must be having some mistake in the node.js installation. So without node.js you cannot install the or we cannot create the new react application. That's the reason before creating the new react application only you should check whether you have installed node.js or not. So if you haven't installed node.js for some reasons you can install it using the node.js official website. So open Google and type node.js and select the first website node.js.org. Here you can see we having the different versions download for Windows X4. So we are having the two version 14.15.3 14 and 14.4.0. So you can download anything. So I'll suggest this for 15.4.0 or you can download these also first you have to click on this here you can see in the download section we are going to download the node.js software already I have downloaded and I have installed the node.js successfully in my system so I do not require this so I can delete it show in folder Here you can see this is the node.js file so already I have installed it so I am going to delete it delete so I will close it open vs code let me check whether it is installed or not so it is in the ending stage it may take around 30 seconds here we go our new react application created successfully you can see the a new folder client is added in the moncurd folder so this is the react.js folder and our application name is client so as you know there are three default folders in every react application node modules public src and we have some files gitignore package.json package.json and readme file so this is the common thing for every react application so to run this application first we have to navigate into this client folder so to navigate into that folder we have to type cd client so now we have to run this application so to run any react application we can use the command npm start so here also i am going to type the same command npm start press enter so it may also take some time but not the installation time it will complete around 30 seconds only here we go our application executed successfully in the localhost 3000 port so every react application requires any one of the port in our system so by default it will take the 3000 port if it is free so if you are running any another application on the 3000 port it may take any another port so here we are not running any applications or any port this is the first application that we have run in this lecture so that's the reason 3000 port is free so it has run in the 3000 port only so now let me check the output of our default react application so open google chrome and here we need to type localhost 3000 here you can see this is the default application for every new react application this react logo and some of the text bottom in that low bottom of that logo and we are having some anchor tag learn react.js so now i am going to remove all these default stuff in the react.js application and i am going to add our project title like this here you can see monstack crud so let me open the react application so react application name is client and to make changes in the react application first we have to make changes in the app.js so here you are learning the mern stack so i think you must be having some good knowledge about the react.js so i need not to tell every time you need to open app.js you need to make changes etc this is the first lecture that's the reason i am going to start everything from the basics only from next lecture we are going to speed up our process so click on the src and select the app.js 
so here we need to remove all the default stuff so i will remove this header part sorry so now i am going to add one h1 text so the i am going to add the mon stack crud application mon stack crud crud application control s so let me check whether the changes has applied or not here you can see all the default stuff has gone we have only one h1 text in the mon stack crud application so here you can see this is the h1 title so let me clarify one thing so we are going to add the css in the last lecture only so because we are dealing with the mon stack it is one of the difficult stack in the present web generation so first we have to concentrate on the front end and back end at the last we are going to concentrate on the styling so don't bother about the styling we are going to create project like this only so we are going to add the add the all the animations and stylings buttons navbar everything but in further lectures so first we have concentrate on the logics in the mon stack application so we have created the new react application we have removed all the default stuff in the app.js so now we have to understand the required components in our application so this is the body component or we can call it as the parent component in every react js application app.js is the parent component so for this navbar we need not to create the separate component because we are having only one h1 text so we can include that h1 text in the app.js itself so below that navbar we are having the post list component or we can call it as the blocks list so we are going to place all these blocks or or we can call it as all these posts in the post list component and in that post list component we are going to add the child component as post item that means every new post so we got the two components post list component post item component and if you click on the add post button sorry so you can see here this is the add post root in this root we are placing the add new post component so this is our third component so we got the three components post list component post item component and the add post component so after adding the post you must be able to edit that post so that is our fourth component which is called as the edit post component so we have to create the four different components in this application post list component post item component add post component and the edit post component so in the next lecture we are going to create all the required components as well as the install and we are going to install the required npm packages in our react application that means we are going to use the bootstrap react router and we are going to use some animations libraries etc so in the next video we are going to discuss about that thank you see you in the next class welcome back guys in the previous lecture we have created the new react application and we have understood the required components so now we are going to create all the required components and we are going to install the required npm packages in our mon stack crud application so this is our developing application this is our developed application so we are going to see this application and we are going to develop like as it is so first we have to create the post list component and the post item component and add item and delete item not item post so open vs code so this is our mon crud application so in the src folder i am going to create the our first new component which is called as the add add post component add post dot js and the second one is edit post and the third is post list dot js and the last one is post item sorry post item dot js so these are the four new components in our application add post edit post post list and 
post item so the first component we are going to write code is post list component because in the home page we are going to represent the post list so here you can see we are going to show all our post list from the database so that's the reason i'm going to write code in the post list component so we are going to use all the functional components only we are not touching class components in any component so you should be aware of the functional components so to create the functional component first we have to import the react so in these post list component only i'm going to write everything from scratch in the remaining components i'm going to use the snippets because we are dealing in the mon stack we are not learning react from the scratch so this is the first component that's why i'm going to re remind the all the things in the react js so first we are going to write the import statement import react from react and after importing the react we are going to create the functional component function post list so we are going to return something i'm going to write the div in the div i'm going to write the h1 text this is post list component so after creating the component you must export that component because we are going to include these post list component in the parent component which is called as the app.js that's the reason we are going to export it export default post list control s so after exporting we have to import that component in the app.js import post list from so we have to write the file path here post list so you can include that post list component bottom of the h1 text that means project title control s let me check whether our new component is added successfully or not here you can see we got our new component which is called as the post list component so now i am going to complete the code in the remaining remaining components so the second component is post item component because you can see here in the post list we are having the different post which is called as the post item component this complete page is called as the post list component and this every new post is called as the post item component so we are going to paste the post item component in the post list component so now i am going to create that so where is post uh, item component this is so first copy the code from the post list component control a control c and paste it in the post item component so here we need to change only one thing instead of post list we have to write the post item so here also we need to change the component name post item post item so we have created our second component successfully so here remember one thing we should not add this post item in the app.js because it is the child component of the post list component that's the reason we have to add this post item in the post list component only we need not to add the post item in the app.js so open post list and bottom of the h1 text in the post item post list component we have to add the post item component post item control s here you can see i have already imported the post item using the snippets so let me open google chrome here you can see we got the post item component now we are having the two remaining components they are add post component and the edit post component so already we have copied the code and we can paste that code in the app.js and here we need to change the functional component name from post list to add post control s so here i will change the add post control s here also we need to export the same thing add post control s and we are left with only one thing the fourth component which is called as the edit post component here also i will do the same thing 
instead of post list i will write edit post so in the h1 text here also we need to change the item component title from post list component to edit post component control s here also we need to change the edit post control s now we need to import this add post and the edit post component in the app.js because these two are the separate routes we are not including these routes in any another parent routes so before the post list i will write add post so here i am not importing every time because i am using the snippets so in the next lecture i will show you the snippets that we are going to use in this project so if you type the component name and press enter the the component will be imported automatically so less than symbol edit post here you can see this is the component name i am going to click the enter button so at the top it will be imported automatically i will click the edit button here you can see it's imported automatically control s let me check the output here you can see we got all the required four components post list post item add, add post and the edit post but our application should not look like this so in the localhost 3000 we should be able to see only post list and post item component here you can see this is our project home page in this home page you should be able to see only post list and post item so when you change the root of our project so when you click on the add post button the root in the url will change so it will change the root from home page to the add post root here you can see whenever the url is containing the add post keyword you should able to see the add post component in our application so when you click on the edit button in any one of the post only you should be able to see the edit post so we need to use the react router to achieve this so you should show the components whenever it is required only you should not show all the components in only one page so in the home page we need to show only two components post list component and post item components so in this lecture we have created the required components and we have added all the default code in the four different components so in the next lecture we are going to use the react router and we are going to use the routing in the application that means in the local host we can see only post list and post item in the add post route we can see only add post in the edit post we can see only edit post component so in the next lecture we are going to discuss about the react router dom thank you welcome back guys in the previous lecture we have created the required components in the front end in our application so now we are going to create the route and we are going to add the routing in our application so to use the routing in react application first we need to install one of the npm package which is called as the react router dom so to create to install any npm package first we have to press ctrl c in the terminal we have to terminate the job now i will type npm install react router sorry react hyphen router dom press enter it will start installing the react router dom in our application here we go react router dom has been installed successfully now we have to restart the application because whenever you install any external npm package the server will be closed or crashed so we need to restart the react server by typing the command npm start press enter here we go the react server has been restarted successfully now let me check the output of our application here you can see it's running successfully now we have to implement the react router in the app.js component only because in that app.js component only we have added the all child components so let me open the app.js component so this is the app.js component so first we have to import the some of the npm packages or some of the npm modules from the react router dom library already we have installed that now we need to import some things from the that react router dom and they are import curly braces browser router and the second one is route 
from react router dom control s here you can see there is no error now we have to add all these components in this browser router only so already you must be having the idea about the react router so i need not to explain everything from scratch so in the promo video only i have said you should be having the some basic knowledge of uh, knowledge in the react js so although i will tell everything from the scratch only but sometimes it may take long so that's the reason i am going to avoid some and i am going to skip some topics so first we have to add the browser router so in this browser router only we are going to place these components first remove these components control s so let me check the output here you can see our application is empty so here in the home page root you should be able to see only post list component and the post item component so let me open the home page root in the project here you can see this is the home page so in this home page you should be able to see post list and post item component so we have to create the root for the home page so how to create the root so it's very simple already we have imported the root module so less than symbol root slash greater than symbol so in this root we have to add the three different properties the first one is path so in which root you have to render the post list and the post item component so we have to specify that root in the path attribute path equal to so home page root home page doesn't contain any root it will be localhost 3000 only that's the reason we need to add one slash only so the second component is the second property is component only in the slash root which component you want to render that means in the home page root which component you want to show so i want to show post list component in the home page root control s and we have to add the third property as exact because it should be exact root only suppose if you are having any some other text after the slash you should not render the post list component if it is uh, if it the if the url is having only localhost 3000 then you should render the, render the post list component now let me check whether the root is applied or not here you can see we got only two components in the home page root that means post list component and the post item component if you change the root so here i am going to use the add post i am going to change i have changed the root from home page to add post root press enter here you can see there is no components in the add post root because in the localhost 3000 that means in the home page only we are going to show the post list and the post item component now i am going to create the second root second root is for the add post component it's also same we need to add the root slash and we need to close this root and we have to add the three properties the first one is path that means url so whenever the url is containing the add post we need to render the component add post add post and uh, the, the last word the last property is exact control s and now i am going to add the third root also root path equal to edit post so whenever we are having the edit post text in the url we need to show the edit post component component equal to edit post control s so we have created the roots for all the components in the first root we are going to render the post list and post item component in the add post root we are going to render the add new post component and in the edit post root we are going to render the edit post component so let me check all the roots so this is the localhost 3000 that means home page root so here we are successfully rendering the post list component and the post item component so now i am going to change the root from home page to edit post press enter here you can see so here edit post i forgot to add the t in the url edit 
press enter here you can see we got the text from the edit post component so whenever the url is containing edit post you should render only edit post but not any another component here you can see we have only this is edit post component so you must be having some idea about this monster cred application this is from app.js it will be default for all the components because we are adding the child elements as all the remaining components in the app.js parent component only so you cannot remove this text from the our application if you want to remove this text you need to remove the h1 text from the app.js so now i am going to check the third route which is called as the add post route here you can see whenever the url is containing the add post you must be able to see the this is add post component so this text is from the add post component only so we have created the components and we have created the required routes so from the next video we are going to write code in the components so first we have to create the backend because we are going to get the data from the backend and we need to create some design that means ui in the application like creating these buttons etc so up to this lecture up, we have completed the basic setup of our monstack crud application actual implicant implementation has not started at so from the next video onwards only we are going to start writing code in the components thank you see you in the next class welcome back guys up to the previous lecture we have completed the setup of the front end now in this video we are going to start about the back end that means node js so in this mon crud application only we are going to create the node server so as of now we have created only react application which is called as the client now we are going to create the node application and we are going to set up the node js server so first and foremost we have to create one javascript file so we can name that file as index.js or we can call it as server.js so click on this new file and write the file name as server.js or you can write index.js also press enter so first in this server.js only we need to start the node.js server that means we have to write some code to start the node.js server so for our convenience i am going to use the express framework in these applications mern stack that means m e r n e e stands for express js so we are going to use the express js framework in our backend so to install express js first we need to install the npm we need to initialize the npm in this mern crud application so how can we initialize that so first we have to open this folder in the terminal already i have opened this mern crud folder in the terminal now we need to type npm in it so it will start initializing the node js application so it will ask some basic questions like package name version etc for all the questions we need to press only one answer that is enter so author here we need to write your name i am writing my name is this okay s yes. so here you can see we got one file which is called as the package.json so without this package.json file we cannot run the node.js server that's the reason first we need we need to initialize the npm so after initializing the npm we can install any one any framework any npm package etc so the first npm package that we are going to install is express.js so i will write npm install express press enter so it will start installing the express js framework in our mern crud application so don't be confused here client is the front end and all these folders and files except the client folder are belong to back end so here you can see we got the node modules folder these node modules is related to the back end and the node modules which is present in the inside the client folder is the related to front end so whatever the folders you can see in the mern crud except the client or belongs to back end so here you can see in if you click on the package.json you can able to see the installed dependencies or we can call it as ex packages so we have installed only one external npm package which is called as the express so with the help of this express js framework we can create the node server so now i am going to create the node server in the server.js so first we have to import the express js so in the server.js i am going to write some code in the express js to start the node server and now i am going to install the one more npm package which is called as the 
nodemon because every time we need not to restart the server if you are having the nodemon we can press control s and the server will be restarted automatically so now only i will install the nodemon in our application so to install the nodemon we need to write npm install nodemon press enter Here you can see the nodemon npm package installed successfully. Now I am going to write some code in the server.js to start the node.js server. So first I will write the express.js import statement. So I will write const or you can use where, where express equal to require. So in the react.js we need to write import when it comes to the node.js we need to write require express that's it so now we need to create one more variable with the help of these express object const app equal to express so now i am going to create the server node.js server with the help of these app variable so to create the node.js server with the help of express.js we need to write app dot listen so these app dot listen accepts two parameters the first one is port number and the second one is callback function so already we are running the uh, react js application in the local host 3000 so we need to choose some different port so i am going to choose port number 5000 for the backend that means express and node.js servers so i am going to write the callback function so you can use the normal default functions or you can use the arrow functions so here i am going to use the normal functions only so this is the callback function so here we need to write any one console statement because we need to know whether our server is successful or not so i will write console dot log node.js server started successfully node.js server started successfully control s so now we need to run this node.js application so to run the application we need to type node server dot js so you can remove dot js or we can include that's that's optional it's not mandatory so here we need to type the file name in which you have created the node.js server so in server.js only we have created the node.js server that's the reason i have written node server.js so press enter here you can see we got the output node.js server started successfully so suppose if you want to make changes in this console log statement or any some statements in the node.js application so here instead of node.js server i will write node.js and express.js control s so here you can see i have pressed the control s but there is no change in the output because in node.js server for every change we need to restart the server so to avoid these only we need to use the nodemon npm package with the help of nodemon npm package we can restart the server by pressing the control s only so now instead of node i am going to start the server with the help of nodemon so press control c now i am going to write nodemon server.js here you can see we got the output node.js and express server started successfully now i will make some changes in the console.log statement so node.js express.js server started successfully with nodemon so now i will press the control s here you can see please observe i am not restarting the server i just press the control s so the server will be automatically restarted now i will press the control s here you can see the server restarted successfully and we got the changed output so initially there is no with nodemon text in the console log so i have changed the text and i have pressed the control s so we have successfully completed the setup of node.js as well as express.js server so suppose if you want to print anything on the screen with the help of node.js server we need to create the root so here we are dealing with front end with the react.js so we need not to include some any roots in the node.js so in this lecture i am going to explain two three minutes about the node.js routing so if you want to print hello world on the screen not only hello world anything on the screen with the help of node.js server we need to create the root 
app dot get so this app dot get accepts two parameters the first one is root so this is the normal simple slash is called as the home page root and the second one is the callback function here i am writing the arrow function so every callback function will take the two parameters request and response so whatever the text you want to print on the screen we need to print the text with the help of response object only because request is the object which we will get from the user that means client so you should not print anything with the help of request we need to send the response to the screen or user or anything with the help of response object only so i will write response dot and hello world with node.js control s so here you can see first we got the output statement which is printed in the console node.js and express.js server started successfully with node1 so if you want to see these output we need to run localhost 5000 in the any one browser so now i am going to open the google chrome so i will run localhost 5000 Here you can see we got the output hello world with node.js here also you can make any changes the server will be automatically restarted with the help of nodemon so here also i will type node.js and express.js express.js control s if you refresh it the server will be restarted here you can see hello world with node.js and express.js so in this application we do not require all these things because we are dealing front end with the react js so you can remove all these roots here we need to create only databases and schemas in the back end we need not to create any front end roots in the node js so in the next video we are going to set up the database so up to the previous lecture we have completed the setup of the front end in this video we have completed the setup of the node js server so in the next two and coming videos we are going to complete the back end setup that means creating the database creating the models etc Thank you. See you in the next class. Welcome back guys. In the previous lecture we have, we have completed the setup of Node.js and Express.js server. So now in this video we are going to see about the connection of MongoDB with the help of Node.js server. So in the Monstack application the database that we are going to use is MongoDB. So it is a non-relational database and it is also one of the popular database for the Monstack applications. So we can include the database files or database code in the server.js or we can make it separate file. So here we are dealing with the complete MERN stack and it is completely dedicated application. That's the reason I am going to create one separate file for database connection. So create a new file with a name. Uh, you can use connection.js, con.js, anything. I am going to use con.js. So for our convenience, I am going to use the one of the famous MongoDB client which is called as the Mongoose. Mongoose is one of the MongoDB client which simplifies the MongoDB syntaxes or we can call it as the MongoDB queries. So if you want to write everything from scratch in the MongoDB, it may take a lot of time. So it will slow down our development process. So if you are, if you are aware of the Node.js, definitely you might be having some knowledge about the Mongoose client. So if you don't have knowledge also, don't worry, I am going to explain everything. So first we need to install the mongoose package. So press Ctrl C, npm install mongoose, press enter. So in this terminal, we have to type npm install mongoose. So it is also one of the external npm package press enter here you can see the mongoose package has been installed successfully to check whether it is installed or not open package.json and you can see the external dependencies that we have installed are express.js mongoose and nodemon so now we are going to create the mongodb server and mongodb database with the help of these mongoose package so before getting started and before creating the database first make sure you have installed the mongodb in your system so already i have installed the mongodb server and also the mongodb compass so this is the mongodb compass if you haven't installed the mongodb yet you need to open the official website of the mongodb so type mongodb 
and click on the first website so click on this software so if you click on if you hover on this software you can able to see this community server and this compass so you have to download these two things this server is for running the mongodb in our computer and this compass this uh, it will provide the gui graphical user interface it is like php my admin for the sql databases so you should be having some basic knowledge about these community server and the compass software so if you haven't installed please install now so close this so now we need to write the code with the help of mongoose to start the mongodb server or we can call it as connecting the mongodb to our application so first open the google chrome and type mongoose so click on the first website so this is the official website of the mongoose if you haven't used mongoose ad you can refer this website for the help so first we need to copy these two things which is which are used for connecting the mongodb with our node application with the help of mongoose so copy these two things and paste it in the con.js or we can call it as the configuration file so the first statement is importing the mongoose in our application const mongoose equal to require mongoose and the second statement is used for connecting the mongodb to our application so this is the mongodb connection url mongodb colon two slashes localhost 27017 this is the default port number for all the mongodb servers in any windows computer and this test is for database so initially the default database name will be test for any mongodb url here we need to change the database name so i am going to change the database name as mon crud so this is the database name and these uh, two statements use new url parser and use unified technology not technology topology are used for the security purpose in mongodb so this is the basic way of connecting mongodb to our node application with the help of mongoose so now we need to verify whether this connection is successful or not so now how can we verify that so first we need to create any one of the database object so i will write const db obj or we can call it as db object equal to mongoose dot connection so this db object variable consist all the information about the database so with the help of this db object we can verify whether the database connection is successful or not so first we have to write the code for successful function if our database is successful what you want to print in the console so i will write db object dot on so this ob db object dot on accepts two parameters the first one is whether verifying the database that means either success or the error so in this first parameter we need to type connected so if our database is successfully connected to our node.js server we need to call any one function so i will write the callback function console dot log database connected successfully or we can call it as mongodb connection successful connection successful if it is having any error we need to write db object dot on so in the columns we need to type error so if it is success we need to write the connected keyword in the columns and if it is having error we need to write direct error only so here also we need to write the callback function console dot log mongodb connection failed control s so we have created the server and we have created the database object and we have written the statements for to check whether the connection is successful or not now how can we 
execute this con.js we cannot execute directly this con.js by writing nodemon con.js because nodemon file will work only if the server is present in that file so we have created the server in the server.js file so that's the reason we need to import this con.js to the server.js so in react terminology we can call it as the import so but when it comes to the node.js terminology we can call it as the modules so we need to export this database module from the con.js and we need to use that module in the server.js so here we need to type module dot exports equal to mongoose so we have exported the complete mongoose object which is connected to the database so we have completed the coding part in the con.js now we need to import these that means we have exported the mongoose and we need to import that in the server.js to run that application so importing is very simple in the node.js so we just need to type app dot sorry not app.js we need to write const db file or we can call it as db config file db con db file equal to require so here we need to write the file path of the database configuration file so the database configuration file path is dot slash con that's it control s so we have created the server we have exported the server and we have export imported that mongodb server in the server.js so now we have to run the application so i will type not npm nodemon server.js press enter so here you can see we got both the outputs node.js and express.js server started successfully with nodemon this is the first output which is present in the server.js so after reading this file const db file is equal to require con.js the node.js compiler will check the con.js file so in that con.js file we have included the code which is used to connect the node.js to the mongodb so here whenever the database connection is successful that means database on connected we have to print the mongodb connection successful if database is having the error it will print the mongodb connection failed so let me give you the clarity about the error also suppose if the default port number is changed it will raise the error so instead of 217017 i will write 27018 so it will change it will give the error now now i will press the control s here you can see we got only one output node.js and express.js server started successfully with nodemon but we haven't got the mongodb connection successful because it is having the error here you can see we also got the error message mongodb connection failed unhandled promise rejection warning mongoose server selection error connected error error refused and we got the port number here you can see this is the wrong port number so it will raise the error now i will go to the normal port number 207017 control s i will scroll down here you can see we got the successful message mongodb connection successful so up to now we have completed the setup of front end as well as the back end so in the next video we are going to create our first component which is called as the add post component thank you Welcome back guys. Up to the previous lectures we have completed the setup process of our Monster CRUD application. So now in this video we are going to create the add new post component in the react.js. So in the Monster application the first thing we have to create is create crud create read update and delete. So first we have to create the data that means we have to add the data into the database. So in this application our task is to create the new post component. So from this component only we can able to add the data to the mongodb database. So in this add new post component we have three input fields title, image url and description. So in the title we have to give the post title in the image url you have to take any one url of the image and we have to paste it in it and in the description we have to add some paragraph or text about the post 
and after clicking the add post button this information will be added as a new post to the database so this is our task in this class so first and foremost we have to open the add post component and we have to design this form and we have to add the background color to the page so without any late let's open the vs code so here you can see this is our app.js component in the main route we have to display the post list initially the post list is empty so here we are in the add post route if you go to the home page route we can able to see only the post list component sorry this is the developed project so this is the developing project you can see this is the home page localhost 3000 so in this home page we have to display the post list and the post item now we have to develop the add post component so we can able to see the add post component by typing the add post keyword in the url you can see this is add post component now we have to design this add post component like this so we have to make this page like this so this is our task in this lecture so first we have to add the background color to the h1 text in the app.js you can see we have the white color h1 text and the black color background color so here there is only a black color background color not background white color background color so we have to change it first so first open the app.js open client src app.js so in the app.js we have one h1 text so here first i will add the style attribute so here we are adding style for only one h1 text that's why i am writing the inline styling if you want to add same styling to the more h1 text you can use the index.css or app.css or you can create specified css style sheet for the component so here we are adding style for only one h1 text that's the reason i am using inline styling so first i will apply the background color as dark that means black and second property is color text color as white control s let's see the output here you can see we got the background color like this so now we have to add the form so before adding the form first we have to add the background color for the body that means index.js so here i am using the gradient background color if you want to get this background color you can type web gradients there is a website called web gradients in which you can find the gradient background color codes so you can simply write web gradients so click on this so from here you can copy any one background color so i am going to use the green background color so this looks better copy and paste it in the index.css so where is index.css here you can see if you apply background color to the index.css body it will be applied to all the components directly paste it here Control s so let's check the output here you can see the background color applied successfully so if you see here we are having some padding or we can call it as the space from the top to the h1 text so in the developed application there is no such margin so now i will add some padding to the h1 text so here i will add some padding padding 10 px control x here you can see now it's looking good so now i will create the add post component first i will remove this this is add post component so where is add post component here you can see this is the add post component control s let's check the output sorry so here i am using the bootstrap for our styling purpose so if you write inline styling it takes lots of time so if you are having good knowledge in the inline styling you can prefer that so 
for our convenience i will use the bootstrap styling only so first we have to install bootstrap and we have to apply the bootstrap grid system so i will take six columns from the bootstrap row and i will put that six columns at the center of the page here you can see the form is present at the center of the page now i am going to install the bootstrap so first i will press ctrl c npm install bootstrap press enter so you can see here the bootstrap installed successfully so now we have to import the bootstrap in the app.js so if you import bootstrap in the app.js you can use the bootstrap classes in any component so now i will import the bootstrap import bootstrap from so the bootstrap module is present in the node modules folder so first we have to navigate into that node modules here we need to type bootstrap in the bootstrap we have to select the dist folder in the dist we have to select css and at the last we have to type bootstrap dot min dot css so this is the way to install bootstrap in the react applications through npm so if you want to use the direct javascript and css style sheets you can paste that in the index.js files so if you want to install through npm you have to follow this procedure so to check whether the bootstrap is installed successfully or not you have to create any one button using the bootstrap class so in the add post component i will create one button to verify whether the bootstrap is installed or not so i will write the button name as bootstrap button bootstrap button so i will apply the class name as btn btn primary control s let me check the output here you can see we got the bootstrap button successfully now we can remove this button and you can continue with the forms so we have to create this form now so here i am running two applications so don't be confused because already i am running the developer application in the vs code because we need three servers not three servers four servers we need two servers for node.js and we need two servers for react.js that's the reason i have opened the already developed application parallelly in the vs code this is the developer application that we are going to develop now so don't be confused like why my instructor is opening two visual studio code tabs so this is the developer application and this is the application that we are developing by seeing the output of this application so in this application i am running two servers you can see this is the react.js server and this is the node.js server for the developer application so this is the developing application here we are running only react.js server now because we are dealing with the front end so in the for coming lectures we are also running in the parallel servers so now i will remove these buttons and i will add the bootstrap row for the class so class name equal to row control s so now i am going to take and use only six columns from the bootstrap row in the bootstrap row we are having the 12 columns div class name call md 6 control s so now i am going to create the form so i will create one div so if you want to create form you can create if you want to add input fields in the div you can add in the input fields also so i will prefer direct divs so the first input field will be title of the post so i will write the placeholder equal to title and the bootstrap class name will be form control so let me check the output here you can see we got the input field now we have to get this input field at the center of the page so after writing all three input fields we will do that so as of now we have to create the remaining input fields input type is equal to text placeholder 
will be image URL. The second input field will be image URL and class name equal to form control control s and the third will be description so for the descriptions we have to use the text area because it may be more than one or two lines that's the reason we have to use text area so i'll remove this and i will use direct slash in the single tag and now we have to write the placeholder equal to description control s we can remove this name and id attributes because we no longer need name and id attributes in the react js we need only value attribute here we can see we got the description but it's not the same length as like the input fields there is some mistake in our code let me check the mistake so here i have not added the bootstrap class name that's the reason it is occupying only some of the width so if you add the bootstrap class name form control it will take the width of the parent so i will add form control press s here you can see now we got the output so now i will bring these three input fields at the center of the page so to bring these three inputs at the center of the page we need to add only one class name to the bootstrap row that is called as the justify content center justify content center control s so if you apply this justify content center to the row all the columns which are present inside that row will be placed at the center of the page so here we are using only six columns that six columns will be added at the center of the page now i will show you the output here you can see title image url and description so now i will add some margins and paddings to the input fields so open in app.css or you can use index.css so I will use app.css so for the input fields I will add the margin as 10px and the I will change border color black I will write the important because we are overriding the bootstrap classes let me check the output here you can see we got the border color but the margin is not yet applied so for the margin also i will use the important tag and for the same text area also we have to use the same thing text area control s here you can see both margins and paddings are applied successfully to the input fields and bottom of these three input fields we have to use one button that means submit button so i will create one button in the add post component button submit or, or we can write the add post control s for this button also i am going to use the bootstrap button btn btn success control s here you can see this is the add post button if you want to bring this add post at the left side we have to use the bootstrap class float right sorry here you can see if you want to bring this right you can you have to write float right if you want to bring the left side you have to write float left so i will write float left only right is not looking good here you can see this is the add post button so now we have completed the designing process of the add post component in the next video we are going to include the react hooks to take the values from these input fields thank you welcome back guys in the previous lectures we have completed the design process of the add post component now in this video we are going to add the react hooks to take the values from the input fields so first we have to include the react hooks so open vs code so this is the add post component so 
we have three input fields that's the reason we have to include three hooks so here i will write const first one will be title and the function which is used to change the title is set title equal to use state and uh, here you can see the use state is already included and imported i am using the automatic snippets so you have to be checked while using the use state hooks whether it is imported or not so the second hook will be image url image url set image url and the initial value will be empty only you state const third will be description set description equal to you state it is also empty so we have included three input fields const title image url description now we have to add these three input fields to the value attribute of the input fields so for the first input fields we have to use title value equal to title and we have to write on change method equal to arrow function in that arrow functions we have to give e as the parameter and set title equal to e dot target dot value so this is the way to use react hooks in the form tags or we can call it as input tags so for the second input field we have to use the image url value equal to image url set no not set on change equal to set image url sorry we must we have to add the arrow function here e will be the parameter set image url e dot target dot value and now we are left with the third one it will be the text area value equal to description on change will be same as like the previous ones arrow function here the parameter will be e set description e dot target dot value so we have added the three hooks to the three input fields successfully now we have to write the on click function for the button so after clicking these buttons we have to send the values to the database so before sending the values first we have to verify whether we are sending the perfect values or not it is providing the correct input values or not so to check that we have to take these input field values and we have to print that values in the console with an object so we can send the send that values to the database afterwards first we have to write the on click function so i will write the function name after clicking this button is add post now i will define this function about the return statement function add post so i will create the post object so every post object will have four attributes in the back end and three attributes in the front end the fourth will be unique id so for every post we will be having the one unique id or we can call it as the normal unique key or id etc so because we need to have any one attribute which will be different for all the post that's the reason we are going to use one unique key for all the posts so first we will use the these normal three input fields so the first one will be title title will be title and the second is what is the second one image url image url image url and third will be description 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 
and after clicking the button we have to print this object in the console console dot log post control s so now we have to check whether the form is giving the correct values or not open google chrome here you can see this is our output first i will open the console so here you can see initially the console is empty now i will give the values title is this is first post and the image url will be i will write something a b c d e and description will be this is first description press add post button here you can see we got the object in the consoles that means our code is providing the successful input fields description this is first description image url a b c d e title is this is first ports so now without any late we can send these values to the database so before sending that as i said we have to use any one unique id to the post so how can we get that unique id so every time we cannot give the different ids to the every post that's the reason we have to use one npm package called as the unique id so if you use that npm package it will give you the separate and different unique id every time you add the new post so first we have to install that npm unique id press enter so here i will install npm install unique id so this is the npm install package name press enter it will install the unique id npm package in our react application here you can see unique id npm package has been installed successfully now we have to restart the server npm start press enter so now we have to import that unique id package in the add post component so import sorry unique id from here we need to type unique id only control s so now i will add the fourth property for the post object so we are giving the four three input fields values from the form only and we are adding one value dynamically that will be different for all the posts so i will add the fourth property post id so for every post we will be having the unique id so for the is for that reason only we are going to use the unique id npm package so unique id two brackets that's it it will provide the unique id for every time so now i will use the same output for the unique id post so open console now so you have to remove these all these things now i will click the add post button expand this so sorry we forgot to restart the server after installing the npm package now i will give the values this is post1 image url will be something like this and description will be this is first description now i will press the add add post button here you can see we got the object description this is first description image url post id here you can see we got some different unique id which will be the combination of alphabets as well as letters so title will be this is post one so for more than two posts this description image url title will be same it may be chance like the both post title and both post url or both post description will be same but at any cost both posts post id will not be same that's the reason we have to use the unique id for all the posts now i am going to add the second post so this is post 2 and this is the second description now i am going to click the add post button here you can see this is post 2 and this is sorry we got the this is description 
post id here you can see the for the first one and the second one the post id is different so every time the post id will be different only that's the reason we have to use one unique id npm package now i am going to add the third one this is post 3 and this is third description here you can see we got the third post in the console this is third description image url you can see for all the posts we are using the same image url and we are changing the post id dynamically by the help of unique id npm package here you can see for these the first post we have we are having the post id as kiz m6 qby here you can see kiz m7 xz xbb and for the last post we are having the kiz m8 p3o like this for every post we are having the unique id so now we have completed the front end part of the add post component in the next video we are going to add some code for the add post component in the back end that means node.js thank you welcome back guys in the previous lecture we have completed the add post component at the front end part now we have to complete the add post component coding at the back end part that means node.js and the express.js so first of all we will see the output here you can see this is the output of the add post component so if you give the details in the input fields and if you press the add post button we have to send this data to the database using the node.js and the express.js so in the monstack applications we will use the database as mongodb so in mongodb everything is collection and the documents tables will be called as the collections and the rows will be called as the documents so we cannot directly send the data with the help of these input field values to the database using the mongodb that's the reason we have to create the mongodb model for every collection so this is the rule in mongodb so whatever the data you want to send to the mongodb you have to send using the mongodb models so the first thing we have to create in the node.js is model for the mongodb so here we have two choices if you want to write all the operations code in the server.js you can write if you want to make a separate file for all the operations related to the post then you can make the separate file so i will suggest you to use the separate file for all the operations using the node.js because if you dump all the things in the server.js you cannot make changes easily that's the reason create a new folder with the name routes and in that routes folder you can create any one file and in that file you can perform all the operations which are related to the post that means create post delete post edit post add new post etc so first and foremost we have to create the new folder so here i will create the new folder with the name routes so in these routes i am going to create the file name as post.js because we are going to perform all the operations which are related to the posts in this post.js only so after writing all the code in this post.js we have to export this so if you want to write all the operations in the server.js you do not require any external package but here we are writing the all the routes that means api links in the post.js that means you have to install an external npm package which is called as the router so if you install npm package router we can perform all the api that means root operations in this post.js and we can export that and we can import that in the server.js so whenever the compiler find the object of this post.js file it will execute all the operations which are present in the post.js file so first we have to install the required npm packages in the backend side so to perform the monstack applications in the backend side we required mainly two npm packages they are router and the body parser so first we have to install the both router package and the body parser package control c so i will type npm install router and body parser so in the coming lectures i will tell why we have installed the body parser as of now you have to ignore it press enter you can see here both npm packages router and the body package has been installed successfully now we have to restart the server using the nodemon server dot 
js or we can simply write server press enter here you can see we got the output node.js server and mongodb connection is successful now in this post.js we have to create the route and we have to perform the operations so first we have to create the express object const express equal to require express then we need to create the router object const router equal to express dot router here we need to write parenthesis so this is the router object so with the help of this router object only we are going to create all the get routes or we can perform the post routes so at the last we have to export this router router sorry not router module we have to export this router module we just need to type module dot exports equal to router control s so now the first thing we have to create is to create the model for the post so before creating the model we have to create the schema so with the help of mongoose client mongoose is one of the mongodb client with the help of mongoose only we are going to perform all the database operations in the node.js that's the reason first we have to import the mongoose because already we have installed the mongoose so now i will type const mongoose equal to require mongoose now i am going to create the schema object const schema equal to mongoose dot schema then we need to create the post schema with the help of this schema object const schema not schema post schema so here schema is nothing but the blueprint of the model schema equal to new schema so in this we have to write the object in that object we have to write the blueprint of our post model that means how our post object should look like so in that post objects we have three input fields one id so the first input field will be title so title will be always string next will be image url image url will also be a string and the next will be description it is also a string and the last we are having the unique id that is called as the post id it is also string sorry control s now we have to create the model const post model equal to mongoose dot model so this mongoose dot model method accepts two parameters the first parameter will be the collection name so you can give any collection collection is nothing but the table so i will give the collection name as posts posts and the second parameter will be schema that means blueprint our schema name is post schema that's it by completing this statement our model will be created successfully so we here we have created the router and we have created the schema of the post and we have exported that router now we have to import this router in the server.js so after this db configuration file i will import that file so i will write const post root that means all the routes which are related to the post are stored in this post root variable so i will write require dot slash routes slash post control s that's it so to check whether it is working successfully or not we have to create any one root or any one console statement in this post.js file so now i will create one root so router dot get so i will create the root name as test 
so i will create the callback function here so every get method or every post method will be having the callback function which takes the request and response as the object request and response control s so now with the help of these response objects i am going to print the hello world on the screen response dot and hello world using router so how can we call this test method so we have to tell the compiler that if url is containing a specific keyword then please go and search in the post.js so we have to give one specific url to the compiler to check the operations in the post.js now i am going to give the specific url so app dot use so i will give the url as slash api slash post so whenever the api link is containing the slash api and slash post the compiler will go and check in the second parameter that means post root so this is the meaning of the statement whenever the url that means api link will start with the api slash post then it will go and check in the post root so now i am going to run this api link in the google chrome then you can understand how router will work so open google chrome and first type localhost 5000 here you can see this is the home page root so here our task is to get this output hello world using router so how can we call this test method so as i said first we have to start the url with the api and the next will be the post and the next will be the method or we can call as the root the root name is test here you can see hello world using router so this is the way to call the routes which are present in the post.js while we are calling from the react.js also you have to use the same route you have to start the url with the slash api slash post after this post only you have to write the root name which is present in the post.js file here we are using the api keyword which is used to separate the react routes and the node.js route so this is one of the very important concept in the mern stack application because in react.js we will use the routing in node.js also we will use the writing so there might be some chances where the react react routes and node routes will be the same that's the reason we have to use any one keyword which will separate the react routes and the node.js routes so here i have used the keyword api because in any case we will not use the api root in the react.js so if you use the api keyword you our roots will not be same that's the reason i have used the api keyword you can use any one of your favorite keyword but api is the developer's suggestion and this post keyword is related because we are checking the roots in the post root file that means post.js so whenever the api link starts with the api slash post it will go and check the operations in the post.js file so this is the theme of the app.use method so in this video we have created the database model we have created the router and we have checked how to call the api links with the help of node router so in the next video we are going to see how can we send the data from the front end thank you see you in the next class welcome back guys in the previous lecture we have created the model for the post because mongodb will accept only collections that means whenever you want to send data into the collection you have to send using the models and schemas so in the previous lecture we have completed that and we also have created the router and we have created a separate file for the all the post related operations in the post.js and we also have created the a sample route which is used for test purpose this is called as the router.get so i will remove this control s so as of now we do not have any roots in the post.js so now i am going to create the first route so before creating the route first we have to complete the code in the front end part so open source folder and the open add post.js 
so after clicking the button on click button add post you have to send this data to the database that means you have to use any one of the http client you can use the axios or you can use the fetch so axios is one of the best http protocol or http client so i will prefer axios so axios is the external npm package that's the reason we have to install it terminate job npm install axios press enter it will start installing axios so here first we have to import the axios in our add post component import axios from axios control s so now i am going to call the axios method in the add post button which will be executed after clicking the add post button so now i will write axios dot post so we have two http methods get and post whenever you are sending the data from the client to server you have to use post whenever we are retrieving the results from the server you have to use get so here we are sending the post details to the server that's why i am going to use the post method post so this post method accepts two parameters the first parameter is api link and the second parameter is the data which you want to send i want to send this complete post object to the back end that means database so i will write the second tag second parameter as object and the axios method is having the two callback function the first will be then and second will be catch then is the success callback function and the catch is the failure callback function so in success callback function we will get the response in failure callback function we will get the error so first we have to print the response in the alert so response so i will print the message in the alert response dot data so it will print the message directly in the alert if it is having any error it will execute the then method then method accepts the err error as the parameter so here also i will write the callback function so if you are having any error it may send the object so if it is success it will send only some statement so we can print that statement in the alert we cannot print the statement we cannot print the object in the alerts that's the reason if it is having any error we have to print that error in the console console.log err control s so in this axios.post method now we have left with only one thing which is called as the api link so before writing the api link first we have to make some changes in the package.json file so open package.json file so in this package.json file at the last you have to add one statement which is called as the proxy so proxy so for this proxy we have to write the value as the localhost 5000 so copy this link localhost 5000 that means our backend url so you should not copy all these things you should copy up to these localhost 5000 only and paste it in the proxy control s so it's completed in the package.json we have added one statement it is compulsory close this and now we have to continue the url in the add post from here so after localhost 5000 we are having the slash api as i said in the previous lecture every backend url starts with the slash api slash post so here post is nothing but all the operations related to the post and after the post only you have to write the root name or the api fun function so we haven't created the api root for the adding new post so first we will create the uh, name in the front end then we will execute that in the back end so the name will be add new post control s so now we have to create this add new post root in the back end so we are sending the complete post object and we have to create the add new post and with the help of this add new post root we have to send this object to the database collection so open the post.js now we have to create the router.post router.post we have to use the same keyword which is called as the add new post here also we need to use the same add new post 
and it is also having the callback function so every callback function is having the two parameters request and the response so here we have to type response not response control s so this is the add new post now we have to send the data to the database with the help of these request objects because all the data which is came from the front end will be stored in this request object and that data will be in the form of json that's the reason in the previous lecture i have told you to install the body parser so in node.js with the help of body parser we can perform operations with the json data so first we have to import the body parser in the main file that means server.js so in the server.js i am going to import the body parser so const body parser equal to require body parser so after importing the body parser we just need to write two more statements app.use body parser dot json body parser dot json and the next one will be app dot use body parser dot url encoded so in this url encoded we have to give one property extended then the value will be true so these two statements are compulsory when you are using the body parser so first we have to import the body parser then we need to write these two statements so we have completed the setup of the body parser now we just need to send these data to the database so before sending first we need to open the mongodb gui which is called as the mongodb compass here you can see this is the mongodb compass click on the connect button so now you can able to see the databases which are present in the mongodb compass so in this application our database name is present in the con.js file here you can see mern crud is our database name as of now we do not have any database with the name mern crud so by adding the first collection and first document the database will be created automatically in the mongodb compass so here i am showing you because there is no database such with name like mern crud so now i am going to add the first post or first document to our database so where is post.js here it is post.js so now i am going to create the model object of the schema that means this where it is post model sorry we have to write this router dot post method after the model so by mistake i have written above the post model because we have to use this post model in our router dot post method so now i am going to create the new post model with the help of this post model const new post equal to new post model so we have to write the values as per the post model schema so the first one will be title title will be request dot body dot title because we are getting the data from the request object and that request object is having the body parser that's the reason we have to use request dot body dot title and the second will be image url here also we need to type request dot body dot image url and third will be description here also request dot body dot description and fourth will be post id request dot body dot description sorry request dot body dot post id control s that's it now we just need to write only one mongodb function which is called as the save so first we have to create the object new post dot save so this save method accepts only two parameters not two parameters only one parameter which is called as the callback function 
function in that function we have to give the error as the parameter so we have to check if it is having any error so if there is no error if there is no error we have to send the response like response dot send new post added successfully if there is any error we have to send the error message else response dot send err object control s that's it our insertion code is completed now we have to check the output from the client that means react.js first i will restart the react.js server npm start press enter here you can see our react server has been restarted successfully now i will check the output here you can see it's working fine so now i will give the title as this is post one and i will copy some image url from the google so i will type react js and copy one any one image url and paste it in the image url box copy image address image url and in the description i will write this is first post description now i will click the add post button if our code is successful it will get the alert pop up with the message new post added successfully if it is having any error then we have to open the console to check the error now i will click the add post button here you can see we got the alert message with the new post added successfully that means our code is success press ok and now open the mongodb compass to verify whether the details are added to the database or not open mongodb compass and refresh the mongodb compass initially we have only four databases after clicking the refresh button you should be able to see the fifth database with the name mon crud now i am going to hit the refresh button here you can see we got the fifth database with the name mon crud so if you click on this you can able to see the collection name posts and we have only one document because we have added only one document in the previous minute click on this post so you can see this is post one image url will be this and description will be this is first post description and this post id will be the unique for every post or every document now i am going to add the second post this is post 2 and here i will change the description as this is second post description and i will change the image url also so here i will use the top users of react js image copy image address and paste it here once again click on the add post button here you can see once again we got the message new post added successfully press ok and refresh the mongodb collection here you can see we got the second post this is post 2 and we got the image url we got the description and we got the post id so by this our first part in the create read update delete is success that means our first part in the crowd operation is completed c is completed in the next lecture we are going to start the r that means we are going to retrieve the results from the mongodb and we are going to show them in the react js thank you see you in the next class welcome back guys in the previous lecture we have completed how to send the data from the client to the node.js and mongodb so now in this video we are going to perform the second operation in the crud which is called as the retrieving the results from the database or we can call it as backend so first to retrieve the result we have to open the post list component because in that post list component only we have to display the results so first open post list dot js so in this post list dot js only we have to show the results which are retrieved from the database so if you want to see this post list component in our application we have to navigate into our home page route so this is the add post route in the home page route we have to show the results 
so this is the home page root in that home page root we are rendering two components this is post list component this is post item component so we have to make this page like this page because this is the home page of the developed project so this is the way to design the home page so here we have to design the post list component in that post list component every new item will be called as the post item component so first we have to retrieve the results from the database using the life cycle method which is called as the use effect so use effect is one of the hook which will be called automatically in functional component so because here we do not have any buttons to perform specific action so whenever the component renders at that time only api call should be done so now i will create the use effect function or it is the one of the hook in functional components so this is the syntax of the use effect hook it will take the arrow function as the parameter and at the last we have to write the curly bracket not curly brackets square brackets so here we need to perform the axios get method axios dot get so in this axios dot get method also it will take the two parameters the first parameter will be api link and the second parameter will be data here we are not sending any data so the second parameter will be empty so the first parameter will be slash api slash post slash root name so we haven't created any root in the post.js to retrieve the results so you can see we have only one root add new post so afterwards we will create first we have to give the name of the root the name of the root will be get posts so it will also have the same callback function then so then we'll having the result as the parameter or response as the parameter we have to print the response in the console console.log response if it is having any error it will execute the catch method so catch method will take the err error as the parameter console.log err that's it so this api method will be called automatically whenever the component renders now we have to create these root in the post.js so here i will create router dot get so link api root will be get posts and it is also having the callback function it will also take the two parameters request and response so here we have to get the results from the database so to get results it is very simple task first we just need to write the model name model name will be post model dot method will be find so these model dot find accepts two parameters the first parameter will be condition on what basis you want to receive the results from the database here we do not mention any condition because we have to receive all the results so the condition will be empty object and second will be callback function so this callback function accepts two parameters the first one will be docs or we can call it as the documents and second will be error sorry so now we have to check if there is any error if there is no error if not error we have to send the response as documents response dot send docs if it is any error we have to send the response as error message else response dot send error control s that's it retrieving code will be completed so now we have to restart the server in the react js to check whether we get the results or not so once again once i will click the refresh button now i will open the console because our results will be fetched in the console inspect open console here you can see we got the object if you expand the object we got the data in that object if you expand the data you can able to see the results this is the first post and this is the second post if you want to see only data in the console you just need to type response dot data in the method post list here instead of printing all the response we just need to type response dot data control s 
remove all these things now hit the refresh button here you can see we got two items in the array this is the first item this is the second item so you can see the description image url post id title of the first item title this is post one image url description this is post description for the second one we are having the this is post two this is second post description so this is the way to retrieve results from the database so in the next video we are going to design the post item component so we have to make this page look like this in this video we just have received the results from the database now from the next video on in the next video we are going to use that result and we are going to design our post item component thank you welcome back guys in the previous lecture we have seen how to retrieve the results from the database using the node.js to the react.js now in this video we are going to use that result and we are going to design the this page post list and post item component so open the post list.js so this is the post list.js so first i will create one variable const hook variable not simple variable hook variable cons post data posts data set posts data equal to use state initially the post data will be empty and after retrieving the results from the database we have to update these post data so we just need to type set post data response dot data so now we got all the results into this post data variable so now we need to loop through this array and for every item in the array we need to return the post item component so now i will create the one more variable const post list equal to now i will loop through the post data array post data dot we can look through the map method so this map method accept the object as the parameter so now i will return one div not div i will return one div in the div i will return the new component which is called as the post item component for every new post less than symbol post item slash greater than symbol so for this post item we have to send the data as the post object that means this object so with the help of props we can send that post equal to less than sim curly braces post control s now we need to post this post list in the body so instead of here removing the item remove these things and we can simply write curly braces post list that's it so there are two items in our array so the post list component should post item component should be rendered twice now let's check the output here you can see let me refresh the page here you can see we got the message this is post item component this is post item component here the post item component rendered two times because we are having the two items two documents in the array so now with the help of that post object values we have to design the post item component so now open the post item component where is it here it is so remove this h1 first of all so we have to accept the props in the post item array not array component so by placing curly braces and writing any one name so this is the props that we are receiving from the parent component which is called as the post list component so here i am going to write the title for the post so the title will be post dot title and the the next will be img so for the img we are having the img url so post is the object and these title image url are the properties post dot image url and the next one will be paragraph that means description 
post dot description control s now let's check the output now we should get the two documents in the form of post items here you can see we got the two documents this is post one this is post two so this is the first post title first post image first post description so this is the first post second post title second post image second post description so here the description is very small so if you want to add some more description you can use so for the testing purpose i have given only one line so now we have to add some styling to this post item component you have to make this component like this so first we have to add the background color for the div so open bootstrap shadow bootstrap shadow so if you are perfect in bootstrap you can write if you are not perfect type bootstrap shadow and copy the bootstrap regular so this is third one bootstrap regular and paste it to the div of the post item component so class name equal to this control s now let me show the output here you can see we got the div like this but we should not get like this we have to get like this that means we have to implement the bootstrap grid system we have to take the bootstrap rows and we have to use only eight or six columns for every new item that means every new post so now i will declare the bootstrap row for the post list component so here i will write class name equal to row and in this post item component i will use only eight columns so here i will write call md eight so from 12 columns i am going to use only eight columns for every new component here you can see now it's looking very good so now i want to bring these components at the center of the page so if you want to bring that components at the center of the page you just need to write justify content center already we have discussed it in the previous lecture justify content center control s here you can see now we got the components at the center of the page so now i want every image will be the same size so i want to use the img fluid for the image tags post item so the class name will be img fluid control s refresh so it's not applied let me check the error so here there is no error in our code the image size is small that's the reason it is showing the small image only if you want to increase the size of the image you can give the height and width properties so here we do not concentrating on that we just concentrating on the logic of the crud applications so if you want to increase you can use it using the css so here you can write the style property style equal to can write height equal to something like 200 pixels sorry in the columns we have to write 200 px control x here you can see now every image will be fixed size so here uh, my suggestion is to avoid these style properties for the image because some images will be strong bigger some images will be smaller so it's looking good if you want to add the full description you can use the full description now i will add some margins and paddings for the h1 img and the paragraph tags so i can use the bootstrap classes for margins and paddings class name equal to p1 p1 means padding 10 so here also i will use the padding 10 for the image p1 for paragraph also i will use the class name equal to p1 padding 10 control s so it's looking good so here don't bother about these images size so in the already developed application i have used some big images that's why it's looking good and paragraph also we have taken some big paragraph if you want to use some big paragraphs you can copy and if you paste it and edit it in the description in the mongodb compass 
or if you want to use it in the initial stages only you can give that in the description so we got everything as expected so now we are left with only one thing actions delete and edit so now i will add the edit and delete buttons for every new post item so you can add that in the post item component here you can see after the paragraph i will write the button the first button will be edit and the second button will be delete so edit for edit i will use the bootstrap class name as btn btn info and for the delete i will use the class name as btn sorry class name equal to btn btn danger control s here you can see we got the buttons now i will add some margins to the buttons in the index.js index.css or app.css i will add in the app.css buttons m10 margin 10 so it's not applied now i will use the important keyword now it should be applied yeah now it's applied so in the next video we are going to see about the delete operations so here you can see if you click on the edit and delete it do not perform anything so because we haven't written any logic for the edit and delete buttons so in the next video we are going to create the logic for the delete and in the further lectures we are going to complete the editing also thank you welcome back guys in the previous lectures we have completed the first two operations in the crud application they are create and retrieve or we can call it as read so now in this video we are going to discuss about the third operation in the crud application which is called as the update or we can call it as the edit so already we have two post items in our post list so this is post one this is post two so we got the results from the database and we have successfully completed the retrieving process of that results and we have designed that result with the post item component so now we are going to edit that result that means here you can see initially the first post title is this is post one and we have one image and bottom of that image we have the paragraph which is called as the description of the post and bottom of that paragraph we have two actions for every post item so here we have only two post items as of now so in the further lectures we are going to add more to perform the different operations so if you click on the edit button it should take us to the edit page root so edit page url is localhost 3000 slash edit post here you can see this is edit post component so after clicking the edit post button we should navigate to that link that means to that root like this application this is the already developed application so if i click on any edit button for the any post item it will take us to the edit post root so once i will click on the edit button here you can see now we have navigated to the edit post root so first we have to add the edit post root for the component so let me open vs code so first of all close all these things now open the source folder and open the edit post dot js so here you can see initially we have only one text in the h1 so now open post item dot js here you can see button class name is equal to btn info edit so here we need to navigate to the edit post root after clicking this button so instead of button here we need to use the link tag so link is one of the tag which is the child of the react router dom module so it is used to navigate from one component to another component using the links so first of all we have to remove this button and now i will add the link tag sorry capital link that's it so if you press ctrl s it will raise the error here you can see link is not defined because link is defined in the react router dom 
So first we have to import the react router DOM in the post item component before writing the link. Now I will import the react router DOM. Import link from react router DOM. Control S. Here you can see now the error has gone. So here we need to give any one of the li tag or we can give the button or we can give the anchor tag in that link so i will give the li tag so you can give any name i will give the normal edit only control s so in this link we have to give the attributes the first two attribute will be two that means to which route you want to navigate after clicking this edit li tag that means link so i will give two equal to edit post control s now let's click the google chrome here you can see we got the edit button at the top of the delete button suppose if you click on the edit button it will navigate us to the edit post component now i will click the edit button here you can see now we are in the edit post component if you click this button for the second post also it will go to the edit post component here you can see now we are in the edit post component so now i will add some styling to the li for this link so i will use class name equal to btn btn primary control s here you can see now we got the output as expected like our developed application here you can see this is already developed application so here also we got the same output if you click on the edit button it will take us to the edit post route if you click on the edit button for the second post also it will take us to the edit post route so now our task is to send the post id of the respective post item to the edit post route after clicking the edit button because in the edit post route we have to perform the api operations that means we have to send the post id to the back end that means mongodb then we have to retrieve that results to update them so here our first task is to send the post item id to the edit post document not document component so we can implement that using the params that means passing the parameters to the route so first we have to change the root name of the edit post initially the edit post route is simple here we are not giving any parameters to the post that not post route so now i am going to give the parameter as post id control s so here normal edit post route will not work from now because if we give post id to that route only it will accept that route so whenever you click the edit post button we have to send the post id to that route with normal route so now here you can see the link to equal to edit post now if you click on this link it will take us to the empty route here you can see there is no root in the edit post because if you click on the if your root is consisting edit post slash any you post id then only it will goes to the edit post component that's the reason it is showing the empty page this is the empty root so now we have to send the edit post root so here in this link attribute for these two we have to make some changes so instead of colons we have to use the back ticks so with the help of back ticks we can send the parameter to this root so already you might be having some knowledge about the back ticks so now i will remove this root and i will add the back ticks sorry before adding the back ticks we have to use the curly brace so in that curly brace we have to use the back ticks so first we have to navigate to the edit post root after clicking on that link edit post so to that edit post we have to send the data so that data will be post id because we are going to send the post id to the edit post component so our post id will be present in this post object so we just need to write post dot post id control s that's it 
now we just need to refresh the page here you can see now i will click on the edit button here you can see we got the post id in the url but there is some mistake in our page so here the url is correct but it is not rendering the edit post component so let me check the mistake in the app.js so here you can see in the path we have given edit post colon post id here after edit post we have to give the slash so edit post slash colon post id here this is the parameter because we are giving the colon colon indicates the parameter so here we are giving the edit post slash that means after the slash will be the parameter we are sending the post id as parameter to the edit post root now i will refresh the page here you can see we got the this is edit post component so uh, if still if you are having doubt about this concept you need to print this key in the con page that means with the help of the use params use params is used to retrieve the parameters from the U url so in the edit post component i will display the key that we are navigating so open edit post component so first we have to create the object of the use params const params equal to use params control s so this is also one of the module from the react router dom that's the reason we have to import that so now i will create one h1 text the post id equal to so in the curly brace i will write params dot post id control s here you can see we got the post id here you can see in the url kj08rx3s kj08rx3s so if you click on the second edit button also it will take us to the edit post component and it will print the key of the not key post id of the second post now i will click on the edit post button here you can see we got the key kj 0 t q y c here also kj 0 t q y c so we have successfully created the root of the edit post component and in the editing process of any monstack application the first thing is we have to get the unique id in the edit post component so here the unique id is post id so now we have to send this post id to the mongodb and we have to get the results from the mongodb then we can update that so in the next video we are going to continue that thank you see you in the next class welcome back guys in the previous lecture we have created the root of the edit post component and we have seen how to send the post id from the post list component to the edit post component using the react router dom with the help of use params so now in this video we are going to use the given key that means post id and we are going to get the entire document from the mongodb with the help of this post id because it is unique for every document so we can retrieve the document results with the help of this key that means post id so first of all we have to write the use effect hook in the edit post component so here i will write the use effect hook use effect so i will write the callback function and uh, i will perform the axios dot post so before writing the url in this axios dot post first we have to create the api operation that means in the back end we have to create the operation to retrieve the result based on the post id so in the previous lectures also we have retrieved the results but in that lecture we do not have any condition but in this lecture we have condition we have to retrieve only one document which match which matches with the given post id because we need to update only one post id so that's the reason we need to get only one document so first of all i will create the root name of the operation so api slash post slash get post data so here the url name is get post data 
so afterwards we will write the logic in this get post data in the node.js first of all we have to perform the axios dot post in the front end so here we have to send the data as post id post id here the post id value will be params dot post id because our url information is stored in this params variable that's the reason we have to write params dot post id Control S. Now we have to write the callback function. Then the success callback function. So if our request is successful, I will print the error in. I will print the response in the console. Dot log. R E S. If it is having any error, it will generate the catch method. So in that catch method, we will have the error. Here also, I will print the response in the console. Error message in the console. Console dot log err. So here our front end logic is completed. Now we have to navigate to the back end. So open post file in the roots. So here we need to create the router dot post for get post data. So here I will create router dot post, and the API name will be get post data. so before writing here we should check the name whether we have given the same name or in the edit post here you can see get post data here also we have the get post data so now i will write the request response object first of all we have to write the callback function in that callback function we will be having the request and response so now we have to get the required documented data from the mongodb with the help of mongodb model so here already we know what is the model name the model name will be the post model post model dot find so here find method accepts two parameters the first parameter will be condition and the second parameter will be callback function so in that callback function we will be having the docs as the first parameter and the error as the second parameter so first we have to check if there is any error if there is no error we have to send the document to the front end response dot send document that means docs if it is any error we have to send the error message else we have to send response dot send err so here it's not yet completed we have to write the logic in this object so as i said model dot find accepts two parameters the first one will be condition second one will be the callback function so in this condition we have to write post id equal to request dot body dot post id so whenever the post id matches with the post id that we have sent from the front end then that document will be sent to the react js that means front end so now our code is completed now let me check the output in the google chrome back so first of all we have to open the console so first of all i will remove all these things here you can see the console is empty after clicking the button we should get documented data from the back end that means exact same data only we should get now i will click the edit button here you can see we got the data so the data is stored in the form of array because it we it is mongodb in every everything is json that's the reason we got the response in the array so if you want to print only the object then we need to write response dot data so in the edit post we have to write response dot data control s remove all these things refresh the page here you can see we got only array so in that array for every time we will be having only one object only because we are retrieving the results based on the post id if it matches with the post id only it will give the result so every time we will get only one object and that object index will be at the zero only so here we need to get these results at the object 
so that's the reason we can write response dot data of zero so it will print only object now it should not print any array it will print only object remove everything refresh the page here you can see we got a complete object description this is first post description image url here you can see the post id is matched kz08rx3x here also kz08rx3x here you can see you can observe the post id here in the console here also you can see so now with the help of these values we can create the form and initially we have to give these in values to the forms and if you want to update you can update or if you want to keep everything same you can keep everything like same so now we have to create the form so in the next video we are going to create the form and we are going to perform the update operation thank you see you in the next class welcome back guys in the previous lecture we have seen how to get the results with the help of the post id and how to retrieve it from the mongodb using the express.js to the node.js you can see here with the help of this post id we have sent the post id to the backend and with the help of the this post id only we got the complete documented details so now we have to create the form like this in the update post button so close everything in the google chrome and open the edit post component so here you can see this is the edit post component remove this and create the form like the same as the add post but add post component because we are going to use the same input fields that's the reason here also we are going to use the same elements so open the app dot not app dot add post component here you can see this is the add post component and copy this here you can see from here call md6 we have to copy copy and paste it in the edit post component control s so here it will give some errors because we haven't declared any hooks so we need to copy the hooks also from the add post component so copy these hooks control c and paste it after the const params control v control s here you can see we got some more errors u state is not defined so here you can import the u state control s we can see add post is not defined in the line number 40 where is line number 40 so here after clicking the button we we have to execute the function like update post in the add post component we need to execute the function add post but here in the edit post component we need to write the function name as edit post edit post so here i will create one function after the use effect hook function use sorry edit post control s here you can see all the errors has gone now let me check the output here you can see we got the add new post here also we need to change the title because this is the edit post component so i will change the h1 text instead of add new post i will write edit the post control s for this main div i will use the class name equal to row and i will write the another class name as justify content center control s here you can see now we got the output as expected this is the edit post component and we got the three input fields so whenever these edit post component is rendered we have to give the initial values as the previous values to these input fields because then only we can able to update that values if it is empty which values you can update so it's not possible so whenever the edit post component is rendered these input field value should be filled with the previous values of the document so 
already we have the previous values in this console.log so we can create any one object and we can update that values so initially title is empty image url is empty description is empty so now we have to fill these values with the help of these response.data so here i will create one object const post data equal to response dot data of zero control s now i will update all these values whenever the component is rendered because use effect is the hook which will be executed automatically when the component is rendered so now i will update the first input field set title so the set title will be post data dot title and the second will be set where is image url post data dot image url and third will be set description post data dot description so before the execution of this use effect hook input field values will be empty after the execution of this use effect hook we will get the values from the database of the respective document and with the help of that values we are going to update the input field values so all this process will be done after the rendering of the component and it will be done automatically because we are writing entire logic in the use effect hook because it will be executed automatically whenever the component is rendered now i am going to hit the refresh button Here you can see we got the output this is post one and we got the image url and we got the this is first post description so the logic that we have written is correct so if you open the edit button for the second post also it will work now i will click on the edit post button for the post two here you can see we got the values as expected this is post two in the image url tab in the image url input field we got the image url and in the description we got the description this is second post description so now we are left with only one thing in the front end in the edit post component that is we have to create the api call so we have to update the values and we have to send the updated values to the database so here i will create the object of the new post data so this is const post data is the old data object and we are giving that old data values to the input fields so after getting that values you can update it by seeing that so after updating again we have to create the new object so i will create const new post or we can call it as updated post updated post equal to so now i will create the object title equal to sorry title equal to title and uh, image url sorry image url equal to image url and third will be description equal to sorry description spelling is wrong here description here also description and the last one will be post id because every post is having the four input fields the third fourth will be post id here we should not give the direct post id we have to give params dot post id because post id is not changed the post id will be always constant with the help of this post id only we can able to update these three properties title image url description so here i will write params dot post id control s so now we have to send this updated post to the back end so here i will write axios dot post so the first parameter will be api link slash api slash post slash update post so we haven't created update post logic in the back end later we will create first we will write the logic in the front end update post 
and the data that we are sending is updated post that's it now we have to write the callback function the first one will be then then is having the response as the parameter so here I will write console.log response if it is having any error we will execute the catch function catch is having the error as the response here we will print console.log err control s that's it our code in the front end is completed now we are left with only one thing in the third function of the monstack application which is called as the update that is writing the update logic in the node.js so open post.js so first we have to create the root to the update router dot post so the url will be update post because already we have created these in the front end so you can you do not have any choice to change that so here we need to write the callback function the callback function is having the parameters as request and response and uh, here we need to write the logic for update so to update any document with the help of any property so here the property that we are using is post id so to update any document using any one of the property we have a mongodb method called find one and update so first we have to write the post model dot find one and update here you can see this is the method find one and update so this find one and update method accepts three parameters the first one will be condition and the second one will be updated data and the third one will be callback function this is the callback function so first we will write the condition so we are going to update the post using the post id so here i will write the condition post id equal to request dot body dot post id and the data that we are updating is complete object that means we are updating all the properties so you can simply write response dot body dot post or we can dire values we can write values separately so here i am going to write this separately the first property will be title title will be request dot body dot title second will be image url image url request dot body dot image url and third will be description request dot body dot description that's it so we are updating all the values that came from the front end now in the callback function we are having the error as the parameter so if it is having any error we have to check it so if there is no error we have to send the response like data updated successfully response dot send post updated successfully and if it is having any error we have to send the error message response dot send err control s that's it our logic in the backend also completed so open the edit post dot js so if our response is successful we will print the message in the alert because every time it's difficult to move to the console so if it is having error only we need to navigate to the console so i will print the response in the alert alert response dot data control s that's it now i am going to edit so here we got the message like post updated successfully first of all we have to refresh the page 
So now I will click on the edit button for the first post. So before rendering only we got the message post updated successfully. So there will be some there is having mistakes in our code. Let me check it. So here by mistake I have written the all the logic in the use effect hook only. So here we need to write these logic in the update edit post function. Sorry for the mistake. So copy this. So here we need to copy from here const update post is equal to. So still here still axios method we have to copy. So first I will copy this updated post object copy and remove from here and paste it in the edit post function. Now I will copy the axios dot post. Control S. Now it will work I think so. So in um, before we have written all the logic in the use effect hook only that's the reason the alert popped up automatically. So in the use effect hook we should retrieve the documented details and in the edit post function we have to update that document. Sorry for the mistake. So now I am going to hit the refresh button in the Google Chrome. Here you can see there is no alert now. So let me go back. So now I will update the second post. I will try to update the second post. Click on the edit button. So here you can see in the title we have the text as this is post 2. Now I am going to update it like this is post 2 title. So here I am trying to type but it is not working. So there is some mistake in our code. Let me check. So there will be some mistake in our use effect hook. So use effect callback function everything is good. So here at the last we haven't added the square brackets. That's the reason the input field is not working. So now I will add the square brackets control s. Now I will try to add the text. This is post to title. So here you can see I have updated the post title of the first post. Now I am going to click the add post button. Here you can see we got message post updated successfully. I will press OK and now I will go back to the post list component and I will refresh the page. Here you can see we got the message this is post to title. So we have successfully changed the title of the second post. Now I will try to change the title of the first post. So this is post one. Now I will try to change it. This is post one title. Now I will click on the add post button. Here you can see post updated successfully. Here we need to change the button name also. So instead of add post we need to change button name as update post. Now I will go back to the post list component. Here you can see the first post title is also changed. So first of all I will change the button name because we have copied everything from the add post component that that's the reason we forgot to change it edit post and after editing the post we need to navigate to the post list component because after editing the post we will not have any work in the edit post component. So that's the reason we have to navigate to the post list component to verify whether our post is updated successfully or not. So to implement that we have to use the use history on concept that means const history is equal to use history control s so before writing that make sure you have imported the use history from the react router dom so if our update is successful that means if we got the response then we we have to navigate to the home page that means post list component i will write history dot push to the home page you can write simply slash so I will refresh the page so now I will update the description 
edit so i will copy some text from the already developed project so this is the already developed project now i will copy the first post description and i will paste it here i will click on the edit post button here you can see we got the message post updated successfully after clicking on this ok button we should navigate to the home page because we have written code like that i will click on the ok button here you can see we have navigated to the home page and our description got updated successfully now i will change the title of the first post edit so i will change the title like the already developed project title only why we choose react js framework control c remove the title and paste it the new title and click on the edit post here you can see we got the message post updated successfully click on the ok button here you can see our post updated completely now i will update the second post edit so first i will copy the title from the previously developed project so copy and paste it here and i will update the description also control c here i will update the description click on the edit post here you can see once again we got the message post updated successfully click on ok so for the second also we got the updated results so by this our update process is completed in the mun stack so now we are left with only one thing which is called as the delete so in the next video we are going to perform delete operation so as i said in the previous lectures in crud operations that means create read update and delete update is one of the difficult task compared to all the other tasks so when you are working with the, these update task and when you are watching these update tutorials please make sure you are working parallelly with me then only you can able to understand this code thank you see you in the next class